Hello guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this is for getting everything possible in Sagebrush. A very interesting adventure game developed by Redact Games, published by Rattalike Games, and is yours for just £5.99 or even $5.99. Now this should take you roughly an hour or under to complete if you can follow along with the video. I have tried going sort of as slow as possible and will try to explain things well. <laughs> try to anyway. Uh, now when you get to the main menu, first thing to do is go to the options menu, turn your brightness up. Um, basically all the way because it does get quite dark in the game. Even with a torch that we have later on, so just go ahead and do that. And then also put the sensitivity down a bit as well. Um, do it, uh, you know, as much as uh, whatever you want. I sort of put it down to about halfway. And that worked well for me. Uh, I mean, otherwise, this is definitely one of the better Rattalika games that I have played. The story is brilliant and pretty unexpected, to be honest. And obviously, the easy 1000 always helps. Uh, 12 tapes that we need to collect as well. Otherwise, it's as straightforward as they come. So, with that being said then, let's begin. Now this first cutscene right here, you can just press the start button and it'll take us into the game. Um, directly to your right, you'll see a car. It's the normal sort of move with your left stick. Um, move the camera with your right stick, press A to interact with things. Um, it'll tell you all of this anyway, so open up the trunk and open up the wire cutters first then. And then it's um, pressing Y, we'll go into your inventory. And then if we just go up to the fence directly in front of the car, um, you don't have to actually press Y to go into your inventory to use them. You can just press A uh, when you're up against an item, and that will normally sort us out as long as we've got the correct item. Uh, you can press uh, the right trigger. That'll make you sprint, so we'll be sprinting quite a lot through this game. So go directly in front of you to this open door and pick up the map on the left-hand side. You can use it to see if you want, but we'll just keep on going without looking at the map, really. Uh, open the door on the left-hand side, and in this bookcase, by the very side of it, you'll find two keys. So go ahead and pick those two keys up, and then we can just exit this room. And basically, directly in front of you is the canteen sort of area. So when you enter this, directly on your left, there is a little um, case for us to open. Pick up the generator key be finding a lot of keys through this turn directly behind you and then in the middle table there is our first tape desk for us to listen to so you can't actually leave this room when it goes black and white you can walk around the room if you want to and have a look around but you can't actually leave this room until the dialogue is over so just as I was saying with the map then um, you can open it up and see where things are located but it doesn't actually tell you where you are on the map which is a bit of a pain in the ass really but there's not too much to do, and I'll explain where we are. It'll all be good. I didn't. I stayed out in California, but it's not like I had any friends there. My parents would call, and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted, because I guess I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others. So once that's over then, the game will save and we can now actually exit this uh, building right here. And we'll be going, There's a. there'll be a gate sort of directly in front of you, just off to the right a little bit. So go ahead, interact with that, and you can use the other keys if you want, but Funnily enough, just like in real life, some keys won't work with certain locks. So it's the one that says gate on it, which you'll need to open. So go ahead, open that. And then just turn directly to your right. And you'll get your first achievement of the game as well. So directly to your right, around the fence right here. And just basically follow it straight. You can just see directly in front of us is like a building with a little shed next to it. That's the farm shed. And that is where we'll be going through. So... Don't get yourself lost in the uh, field of corn right there, unless you want to, but, you know, we're all going straight, so it makes no difference. Uh, keep on walking, keep on walking, sprint. No point walking, this will just take you longer. And we finally made it, so 
get next to the door, open it up with the key that says farm shed on it, and you can actually turn the light on just above this um, cabinet right here is a chain as you can see kind of finicky some sometimes it can be a little bit finicky but turn that on examine the jacket to the right and you'll find yet another key and then with that we can find uh, you can find journals but they basically just add something to the story they're not necessarily needed pick up the batteries that was next to them and then pick up the second tape deck and what the batteries do is we can now turn on our flashlight with the B button. It's basically recommended as the game gets darker the further through the game we go. It's recommended just to keep your flashlight on anyway, but press B to turn it on or off. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. So once we are done in this room there, we'll exit and basically straight ahead you can see the cornfield directly in front of us. So we'll basically be going straight through there, taking a little bit of a right until we find some baseball bases. So just at the end of this cornfield, take a right now and you see that little mound of hill? Right there, you can probably just see them off in the distance, the little bit of whites on the floor. So to get this achievement, all you have to do then is start off at home base. You see, I'm on second base, there's third base. And so for this achievement then, all you have to do, start on home base. You don't actually have to examine every single one, you just got to run over them like you would normally in baseball. So to first, then to second, then to third, then to uh, back to home and achievement unlocked. Is it more weird when a British person talks about baseball and you haven't got that strong, deep American accent? I, I don't know. I, I feel weird talking about it. Anyway, with that unlocked, look directly at the sun and then we'll be going just to the right of where the sun is. Now we'll be heading for the trailer park. Now, this is an area that we visit, um, I think, basically the most during the game. We visit this area quite a few times. So sort of head right um, and basically straight until you get to a main road and you'll see now where it's all fenced off you can go on the main road right here and as soon as you enter go next to these sort of bathroom stalls the first one that you will enter directly on your right look into the toilet and that is where we find a pregnancy test which man I can make so many jokes right now but I'm actually going to leave this one in case uh, in case I offend anyone so <laughs> we'll just move on with that so as soon as you're out there then go towards the left and you'll see a trailer park now on your right the first one that you come up to uh, you can have a look there's a sign that will be actually on the trailer so you can always tell when you are in the right one this is the one we need to be going for brother Andrew so open up, the key, uh, open up the door with Andrew's key, uh, have a look on the bed for a key, and then directly behind you on the table is another tape deck. Life with the flock was good. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks, in the evening, we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. So that's everything in here, now we can exit and go directly again to your right and there will be another trailer uh, basically directly in front of your view in the middle the middle one we'll need to be going for, that is Sister Viola so again, open up your inventory, get uh, Viola's key, make sure to get the correct one to open the door with again you can have a look around, there's a couple of journals, sometimes you might get stuck so just keep trying to force your way through but basically use the tape deck straight away, and that is an achievement for finding four tape decks so far. To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, 
Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. Not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. So that's the trailer park done with fun. Now then, there's no keys or anything in here, so as soon as you exit, turn directly around, um, basically going back on yourself, and we'll be exiting the trailer park for now. We will be back. And you see the big red building in front of you? That is the school, so that's where we'll be heading next. Um, basically, in here is just another tape deck. And if you're wondering, while you play this game, learn more about what's happening and think, holy shit, at the end, has this ever happened in real life? Well, not sure if you have if you have ever heard of Jim Jones. If you have no idea who that is or what he did, Google him or on YouTube type in case file Jim Jones and have a listen. Because this game is basically that. Insanity ensued. Seriously. So unflinching. It had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them and she said, good, they should be scared. So once that is done then, dialogue's open, exit out of here, turn directly to your right and right again, you'll see a big red generator here. Now go ahead, turn this on with the only key that you've got left for the moment. And you can, it's, it's on, so you're all good. And now you see the building just to the left of us there, that is where we are heading next. Now the gate is locked, um, we need a code to enter. Now if you want to actually find it yourself, the code, it's basically the first revelation, which is dated on the calendar in the schoolhouse for those that do want to find out for themselves. But the code is 0603, okay? 0603, but if, again, if you do want to find it, it's dated on the calendar in the schoolhouse. So, yeah, that's that information I got for you. But there, go ahead, go in, directly to the right, we are going into a bedroom. Now, this looks um, pretty damn dang dodgy. <laughs> so you pick up the master key and then the tape deck once again. And basically, this is where it, this is where shit gets real, real messed up now. And again, I mentioned Jim Jones earlier on. This is this, this is exactly the sort of stuff he did. So, oof. yeah, pretty hardcore stuff, this. Bloody weird. Bastards. Some of us are called to labor in the fields to feed the flock. Some are called to train and to defend us. Others to teach our children the true way of things. The Lord calls upon many women to provide succor and relief. Now those of you with husbands may be rightly confused. Is this not a sin? I ask you, do you not love the Lord more than your husband? Would you deny the Lord himself your love? I am his flag bearer. So remember to pick up the master key, which was next to the tape deck if you hadn't already, just in case. Now we can exit once that is done. And you'll notice every time you progress the story a little bit and um, pick up certain keys and certain items, the game gets progressively darker, so we're sort of in the dusk now. And we are heading now back towards the trailer park. We'll be going into another trailer for us. So go past the school here. Again, it's basically just straight on from that weird bloody goddamn priest bedroom that we were in. That weird sex room. Yeah, weirdos. And basically take the left path up. Keep going straight up the hill. And you will eventually come to Brother Leonard's trailer. Again, the sign on the side by the door will tell you that. Open it up with the trailer master key. Go inside. Again, you can have a little look around if you want. But we'll be taking the bolt cutters to the right. And there's another tape deck on the left. So listen to this once again. The deceiver changed Father James, though only a few of us seemed to notice. He had new revelations almost daily. Doctrines changed. Actions that would have been terrible sins previously were suddenly permissible, while seemingly innocent behaviors became mortal sins. The others seemed to have no problem going along with it. I wondered if something was wrong with me. 
Father grew visibly agitated, and as adamant as he was about the sanctity of his new revelations, something was different. He was scared, and that scared me. So once you've collected everything in this room then, we'll head out of Leonard's door. And we'll be going to another trailer, Brother Peyton's trailer. So go directly in front of you. And it's the second trailer just here. With the one with all the chains on it, you'll see Brother Peyton on the sign. Use the bolt cutters to gain access to that. Hardcore, this chick is, and she is a chick, our main character. Pick up the shovel, there's nothing else of any note. There is a journal there, you can read if you want it, but... Again, it doesn't really do anything. And now we will basically be heading, <coughs> basically be heading to the fire pit. So go straight, sort of on the main road. And it's starting to get to that point now where you just go to the right, you'll see this tree. And basically just go straight from this point. And you will see another tree just in the distance. That is where the fire pit is. And now it's getting a little bit more darker. It's starting to get... A bit trickier to you know um, pick up the points and see where you are etc but you know I'll do my best I'll do my best so there's nothing there you just go to where the tree is and examine the patch of dirt you know if I can actually get, get onto it use the shovel and that will eventually there we go and you'll get another key that is in that patch of what looks like dirt but it actually looks more like rock so there's nothing else from there so now we can turn back around go back towards the trailer park from the main entrance again turn directly to the right you remember we got the pregnancy test from the toilet earlier but there's a trailer next to that it should say sister lillian so open that up with the Lillian key we just found in the um, patch of dirt by the fire pit. There's a tape deck and a key that we need to pick up here. So the key is just right here next to the light switch and the note. And then go ahead and click on the tape deck. We've got another achievement. Life coming to me. Somehow he could tell that I was wavering. I'm still not sure how. He was from the FBI, he said. And he was here to investigate the group as a cult. When he said that word, I told him to go to hell. I almost went right to Father James, but I didn't. He left me a pamphlet that talked about the signs of a dangerous cult. At first, I refused to read it. What was the point? How could that have anything to do with our group? But I did read it, and even though my entire brain was screaming at me, I went back to him. So now that we are done in this room, we can head out and basically from the, we will now be going to a barn. We've got a, the cleaning room key. And again, for reference, we'll exit the main road here, turn to the right where the tree is just there and basically just head straight from here. You can see the red barn just off in the distance there. So you should be good to go. You'll go over the baseball bases once again. And... It starts getting, once again, a little bit more mysterious. I find a little spot of blood, and it's not even, not period blood, this is actual murder blood. So, now stuff starts getting weird. I mean, any type of blood is weird, you know, period or murder. Nobody wants it, but, hey, there we go. Okay, if anyone periods like that, then you should go to a doctor. Um, <laughs> open the barn up with the cleaning key turn directly to the right you'll see uh, an altar go ahead and get the axe from that i mean that is a lot of blood so that's definitely murder yeah climb the ladder and you'll see like a pedestal which is directly to your right um there's a tape deck on there we will need but there is a key if i if you turn to the right now there he is there he is there's another key for us to pick up to the mines and pick up the tape deck he called it the cleansing room, where we would exchange pain in this realm for forgiveness in the next. We'd all gather in front of the altar, and one by one we would declare our sins to the flock, each of us given penance to perform in front of the others. Bloodletting, self-flagellation, I saw men break their own bones, and women cut off a finger that had caused them to sin. It was true devotion, 
and it was terrifying and wonderful to see. And once we're done with this bit then, we'll go back down the ladder, ladder, ladder even, and this time we are going to the mines, so go behind you there, go back through the exit the way you came, which for some reason was hard work for me, not sure why, go directly again to the right and there should be a building there. Now we can enter the mines with the mine key that you've just picked up. And go towards the wood at the back. You think you can't get in, but you actually can. Smash it down with the axe covered in blood. And then go ahead and activate the elevator. By the way, we are more than halfway done with the game now. We've got about 15 minutes left of the game entirely. So from here then, you might get lost, so just take your time. Go right at the first um, the first time you can here. Then at the next sort of intersection, turn to the left now. And then just keep going straight all the way down. And then you'll see this little room with a bench and things like that in it. Um, go up to the bookcase and pick up the oil can you've just seen there. There's nothing else in this room now, so now we can head out. But instead of going right back the way we came, you just keep heading straight all the way down now. And here we are then. You'll see this minecart that you can't move, but a little bit of oil always does the trick. If you've got any uh, anything that you need to move, anything heavy, a bit of oil always does the trick there. So get the oil out, move the minecart. Axe up the wood in the back and you'll see the dead body here. So go ahead, just pick up the gas can and then pick up the tape deck after examining the body and picking up the letter. And with that, you'll get another achievement and when we get out of the mines, it'll now be night time, so it'll be even harder to see. It might have been my fault. So using a reference point from now, I will try and tell you where exactly we are going, but uh, again, you shouldn't have no issues really. I don't know, but I can't shake the feeling that it's my fault. It doesn't matter. They found him. They told us he had decided to leave the flock. I didn't believe them, but I didn't ask any questions. After that, we moved on. It was like he had never been there at all. It scared me, but instead of trying to get away, I just let myself fall deeper in. I did my best to shut out any doubts. It was easier that way. So once you got the gas can, examined the body, picked up the note and the tape deck. Remember to do all them. Now we can go back the way we came. So go left now instead of going straight on. But at this point, we'll go straight on again at the intersection there. Go straight and we will come up to a generator that we can turn on. Use the gas can to... Turn on that ge uh, generator. And then when all set is said and done, turn back. And this time we will go to the right to exit the mines. So this is it now. No more mines. We're getting closer and closer to the end of the game. Now we've just got a few more things to do in the darkness of night. Ooh, scary. So exit the mines now, and basically what we'll be doing is using the moon as a big reference point from sort of now. So just keep going straight ahead until you get past this barn right here. And then once you pass the barn, turn just to the left, just so you're looking directly at the moon. And we'll go over a, a couple of hills. And what we're aiming for is the building with the farm shed next to it that we were in very, very early on in the game. And here it is then. So you might not be able to see it until you sort of hit it, but just following the moon, you should be able to uh, get there eventually anyway. So turn directly around from the farm shed and directly again in front of us, you'll see the cornfields. So stop just before you get to the cornfields. Go to the left and you will see in the bottom corner right there just a patch of dirt. 
and we can um, uncover that with a spade and get another key. So as long as you followed the directions there, it's, it shouldn't be too hard to find, but it should be shouldn't be too good. Now the reference point we've got for this, you just go in straight ahead basically from there. But you see just the shapes of the um, hills and things. That's what you need to sort of follow. Once you get to this building on the left here, turn just a little bit to your right now, and we'll be going back to the um, the house which had the weird sex tape stuff in it. So from this point, you can just go straight. The one with the uh, padlock that we had to enter earlier on, if you remember. But it's just from that last building, turn a little bit to your right, and you should see it in the distance. And that code then is 3564, okay? That is 3564. And then when you are inside it, you can read the note if you want, but what we're going for mainly is the seal, the seal of approval. And that unlocks us yet another achievement. Now we are basically coming up to the end of the game. So from this point then, there's the moon. So obviously we'll just get out of here first. So we won't be coming back to this area. So from the moon, just go directly to the left. Um, up a couple of hills, just sort of keep going straight as you can at this point. And then we will see the doomed church that we need to enter. Um, st there might be some sort of steep hills that you can't actually get up, but... You know, just keep sort of going as left as you can and uh, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Uh, go up to the stairs, up to the church, and then enter the seal on the door. Now, there'll be, there will be a lot of dialogue, but we are basically, like I said, done with the game. Not a lot left for us to do now. But if there is anything that you have missed, it's basically a point of no return. So if there is anything you haven't missed, then do it before getting this tape deck. Otherwise, you'll have to start a new playthrough and do it all again. But if you've been following this playthrough, obviously, you shouldn't have anything to miss. And this tip deck goes on for about two, two and a half minutes. So, enjoy. I know his will, and it's time. This world is molded in filth. It's too far gone. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we prove to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little. There's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us, and we will join our Lord in his heaven, we will be by his side forever, where we belong. Amen. Amen. Boy, I love each and every one of you so much. God bless. That's when they locked the doors. And then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly, as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just sat, sat down in it. Let it take them. Something clicked. I I don't know what. I needed to get out. I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran.
So that's a, another achievement unlocked. Now we can go through the door of doom and death. Uh, pick up all three journals. They, they're not hard to find. They're literally basically right in front of you. There's one there, two there, and there'll be another one to the left of this. And pick them three up. And that opens up a secret door. Now what we'll be doing is basically going through a series of hallways. Um, until we get to the end, basically. But there is one more tape deck in this room to get. So before you go rushing through, pick up this last tape deck for another achievement. The door shut behind me and everything was dark and completely silent. As if the burning chapel and all the people dying behind me didn't exist. The drugs took over then, and it was all I could do to crawl into bed before I passed out. So now this is basically it. So all you'll be doing is going through hallways, um, watching the sort of cutscene play out, the dialogue scenes play out. They could take up to about a minute or two each. And then that's it. So there's nothing else. So... You know, I'm, I'm genuinely interested. Again, to be honest, this is what, definitely one of the better Rata Laika games that I thought. And I really enjoyed it. I thought the story was absolutely excellent. Uh, but, you know, what what do you guys think? You know, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this Rata Laika game. You know, in terms of graphics, you know, did they sort of go to do it on purpose? Because there's a few games that have this sort of half artistic and half... I, I don't even know, but <laughs> just let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Obviously, I won't be talking a lot through the rest of this game. Now, coming up towards the end, because there's just no point, just enjoy the dialogue and enjoy the scenes. being quiet. I don't know what to say. It's just... Lillian, was it something we did? Dad! I just don't understand how you could run off and join some insane cult. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. You're a smart girl. What were you thinking? Lillian, the things I've heard on the news... Where are you going? So, Lily, have you been having any more thoughts since your last attempt? All the time. It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know. I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them? Or because you didn't die with them? I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. I'm sure you don't want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You study communications, right? What kind of job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. Oh, cool. I always wanted to do something like that. I bet it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. Just expect to devote everything to it. It's like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine.
You have one unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. P please pick up. I'm worried about you. Okay, just, just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. Message deleted. So this is the last room. Basically what you have to do is just go back out the room and fly back through the hallways to get to the outside where the sun will rise and you will find out who you're playing through the game, which was Lillian. Whoa, spoiler alert. But that's it then, guys and gals. I really hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. Again, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And hopefully this guide helped you out and that you know, the reference points weren't too bad and you didn't get too lost and hopefully I was helpful anyway. But, you know, if it has helped you and you have enjoyed, of course, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I really appreciate ev really appreciate everyone who takes their time out to comment and like my videos and say nice things about the, the stuff I create. Really does... Really does make me a happy guy and... This is the stuff I love doing. So thank you all for watching. Again, like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Big love. Oh, Lil, Jesus, there you are. I've been trying to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? I, I had to take care of something. Look, just... just are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm heading home now. Tim? There's some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James.